First-hand experience in high transaction costs and black markets is the focus of this simulation we call Nalevo, or when acting within the law is inconvenient. For the average householder, the consequence of the Soviet Union's collective choice of a centrally directed economy was the burden of incredibly high transaction costs in the form of time spent searching and queuing for goods and services. Transaction costs can be significant in market economies too, but under the Soviet government system, they became extraordinarily high. In this simulation, students suffer the irritation of long lines and bureaucratic obstinacy at the Bureau of Production and the Bureau of Records before they can even get to the line at the Bureau of Candy. They quickly develop an understanding of the willingness of the Soviet citizens to engage in transactions na levo, or on the left. To prepare for this activity, you'll need a large supply of scrap paper cut into four inch squares, a visual of the doodle to project on the screen for your students, and several bags of small candies like Starburst or Hershey Kisses, even bite-sized candy bars. You'll also need a few better prizes for the bureaucrats, like larger candies, cans of soda, things from the school spirit store, extra credit points, even bathroom or homework passes. Prepare three tent signs, one for the Bureau of Production, one for the Bureau of Records, and one for the Bureau of Candy. You'll also need a large supply of squares of colored paper. Sticky notes work well. Gather a few markers, a stack of index cards, and a ruler. And the last thing you'll need is some ruble cards. There are masters of copies of 10 ruble and 20 ruble debit cards. Copy and cut enough 10 ruble cards for about two per student in class. One sheet of the 20 ruble card should be enough, as you'll need two cards for each of the three ministers in the activity. The second thing you'll need to do to prepare for this activity is strategically set up your classroom. Set up the three ministers' offices in the front of the room with the appropriate tent sign on each desk or table. Keep the three ministers' offices close to one another so that the ministers may interrupt work to talk to each other and so that the lines of waiting citizens can interact and mingle with each other. The last thing you need is the elite store. Set this up on the teacher's desk or in a more prominent place in the room where the better class of products is displayed. Things like soda, candy bars, tardy passes. Display prices for these items in the range of 15 to 40 rubles so that ministers can afford the items. Now you're ready to begin. Choose three students to play the role of bureaucrats, the Minister of Production, the Minister of Records, and the Minister of Candy. Give each minister their supplies and send them to their office. The Minister of Production will need a large quantity of sticky notes and a ruler. The Minister of Records needs some colored markers and a stack of index cards. And the Minister of Candy needs a large pile of candy. Make sure everyone understands these ministers are among the more privileged individuals in your country and that they are trying to earn money to shop in the elite store. They will earn 20 rubles each round and they get paid up front. So go ahead and pay them right away for the first round. Ministers, feel free to take breaks as needed if you just want to go and browse and check out the elite store, okay? Or talk with each other, can, you know, confer about strategies and stuff. Okay, so everybody else in the room, your job, you are producers, and you have little squares in front of you. And on those squares, your job is to produce a doodle. Project the doodle and explain that this is what citizens in our country produce to earn income. And then proceed to explain the lengthy process by which their society works. The production round has begun. Everybody's working on their doodles. As soon as you have a doodle, you can bring it to Conrad at the Bureau of Production. Workers are paid 10 rubles when they are hired. And go ahead and pass out their rubles while you explain the rest of their instructions. Workers produce doodles to the specifications of the production ministry and they take their finished products there to be checked by the minister. Use the doodle visual that you have projected on the screen to show students the work specifications that the production of ministry has provided for their production. Specifically point out the six components of the doodle. Papers that do not meet the minister's standards will be returned to the worker and must be corrected. Papers that do meet the minister's standards will be collected and the minister will give the worker a yellow square of paper for each doodle. 
Workers then take their yellow squares to the Ministry of Records where the minister painstakingly records on an index card the worker's full name, their parents' full names, their address, the date, the time of day, and the number of yellow squares presented at this time. Only the minister himself may record this information. When he is finished, he will draw a star on the worker's yellow square with a colored marker. Workers who have yellow squares with stars may go to the Bureau of Candy to buy treats from the minister. One yellow square and two rubles must be exchanged for each piece of candy. Whew! Think you've got it? These procedures are intentionally complicated and burdensome. That's the point. You want students to find themselves in long, frustrating lines. Don't be surprised. In fact, you should probably expect that some students will try to cheat the system. Don't take measures to prevent cheating the system. In fact, you can make it easier by leaving markers and yellow paper around the room, seemingly accidentally. After round one concludes, have all the students return to their seats and let the ministers shop at the elite store. Ask if students understand the game and whether they have any comments or questions, and then act surprised at their complaints. Admonish the students. Obviously, this is their problem, because you can clearly see that the ministers are doing their job. Clearly, the students have not made an efficient line, or they're not giving their information to the minister in an organized way. Consumer complaints in the Soviet Union were routinely treated in this manner. The consumer was blamed for using the product inappropriately or having no scientific basis for his complaint. Pay the ministers again and play a second round, and allow this round to go on a little longer, and this time pay special attention to what workers do to get around the system so that you can use these examples when you debrief the activity. Anticipate that the students might make their own yellow squares by taking papers and markers left around the room or take the discarded work products and try to reuse them, or find ways to cut the lines, or even bribe bureaucrats for extra yellow squares, or to buy things for them in the elite store. Now you're ready to debrief the activity, and your debrief should focus on transaction costs. Transaction costs are non-monetary costs people have to bear in order to obtain goods and services. For example, standing in line or time spent searching would be transaction costs. Sometimes transaction costs are referred to as deadweight costs when the cost is of no benefit to either party in the transaction. For example, no one was made better off by the consumer bearing the cost of standing in line or the time and energy it would take a consumer to find products that cost him and provide no benefit to the seller. When the transaction costs are so great, you see people take action to avoid to decrease those transaction costs and sometimes they do that outside of the legal boundaries. Point out that the time spent on doodle production is not a transaction cost. It was a cost of production and the opportunity cost of the time you spent producing a doodle resulted in a benefit for you, the income you earned and eventually the candy you bought. Help students distinguish between transaction costs and the price or money cost. There wasn't much they could do to reduce the money cost, that being the price, because there was no competitor. The Bureau of Candy was the only seller. There were things, however, that they could do to reduce transaction costs. Ask students for examples of things they did to reduce transaction costs, and then provide examples of some things you witnessed during the simulation. 
perhaps the students cheated or entered into black market transactions. For those students that admitted to cheating or that you observed cheating, ask them why they did it. And then I noticed you have sticky notes with stars around you and... Well, I figured it's not that hard to make. I'll make my own. It's easier to skip the production okay. of the doodle. I, I saw some other people over here. When You must have been shopping at the store or something, but people were... They were just making... These don't all look like your handwriting. People were making their own cards. That was nice that they were doing that because some people didn't even make their own cards. I saw other people just picking up markers and star picking their own sticky notes and starring their own sticky notes. Have the students compare their experiences shopping in the United States to this activity. Was the Minister of Candy more or less responsive to consumers' needs, wants, and desires? And why do you think that was the case? Have them identify the incentives that the Minister of Candy faced. And then have them use their knowledge of incentives to explain why the minister responded the way that he did. If they don't bring it up, point out that the minister faces no profit or loss that's dependent on how he treats the consumers. His rewards come from the planners. Therefore, he has no reason to care about the consumers. Ask the students how they felt about the economic planner, that's you, the teacher, blaming them for the inefficiencies of the ministers. They should recognize that the planner's response affected the minister's behavior. It changed the incentives in such a way as to encourage even less responsiveness to the consumers. Wrap up the debrief by having the students compare and contrast a small candy store in our economy with the Bureau of Candy in this simulation. Have them identify the incentives that face the owner of a small candy store, specifically profit. Then think about how the incentive of profit influences his behavior his treatment of customers. Ask your students to identify the benefits of engaging in legal market transactions, and then have them identify the benefits of engaging in illegal transactions. Remind them of opportunity cost, that being the benefits they forego when they make a choice. In this case, the opportunity cost of engaging in legal market transactions is the benefits of engaging in illegal transactions. Now think about how high transaction costs change the opportunity costs of engaging in illegal markets. After participating in this simulation, your students will have an unforgettable understanding of transaction costs. And while this analysis of cost and incentives does not justify or excuse behavior, it definitely helps students understand the willingness of many, if not most, Soviet citizens to participate in illegal transactions or transactions, not Levo, on the left.